is a question that gets asked most often when people are in the process of either writing their personal statements or if they are preparing for medicine interviews. Now, I get asked this question for a different reason. And if you guys don't already know, I've recently been accepted to study medicine at Birmingham. It's a graduate course. And because it's a graduate course, it meant that I would have had to do a previous degree. Now, my previous degree was in biomedical sciences, followed by a master's in translational cancer medicine. So I approach medicine from a research perspective and from a research angle. And for this reason, I get asked, why did I want to study medicine and not pursue a research route instead? And I think this is a very valid question because I'm certainly not the first person who has gone from a research field into medicine. And there were two specific comments that I got from you guys quite recently, which sparked off the idea for me to sit and make this video. So I thought for anybody who may be in a similar situation, I would talk a little bit about my reasons for deciding to switch from research to medicine, just to give you guys some more perspective. And also, I'm kind of hoping that by talking about my experiences of why I wanted to do medicine, it may help you guys who are in the process of preparing for interviews or writing your personal statements, kind of gather your thoughts, I suppose. So, as I mentioned, my journey began with studying biomedical sciences at Newcastle University. And at the time that I applied for biomed, I genuinely think I was one of the very few people who applied for the course just because I wanted to study biomed. Honestly, to this day, I still get people saying to me, oh, you did biomed. Is that because you failed to get into medicine the first time round? No. I just like science. But to be honest, it is a valid question because biomed is like the gateway drug into medicine for a lot of people. So joking aside, when I first started biomed, I knew that I wanted to do something in a lab, but I thought that I wanted to work in an NHS lab. So for a really long time, I was thinking about transferring onto an accreditation program where you essentially get qualified to go and work in an NHS lab as a biomedical scientist. Now my university wasn't accredited with the Institute of Biomedical Sciences, which is what you need to work in an NHS lab. And I'm not really sure about the reasons for this. Some universities are accredited and some aren't. But from my understanding, research universities tend not to be accredited and the ones that aren't that research heavy do tend to be. But please correct me if I'm wrong because I've never really figured out why some universities are and aren't. Anyway, long story short, Newcastle was not accredited and they were a pretty research heavy university. And soon enough, I fell in love with the research side of biomed. I remember it was in the summer after my second year and I was very, very fortunate to find a 10 week placement and I got to work in a breast cancer lab. And honestly, my love for being in a lab and research, everything started from there. And I'm really, really thankful for the opportunity that I got. And in case anybody asks me in the comments, which some of you might, I got that place simply by emailing so many PIs. I think I emailed around 40 people and one person offered me a place to go and work with them over the summer. So fast forward a little bit onto third year, I've already done 10 weeks working in a lab and then I did my dissertation which was another eight to ten weeks in a lab and by this point I had kind of made up my mind that you know what I want to go and do a PhD I really like this I want to build on a research career I want to move towards that path and I really can't remember the specifics of this but I have a feeling that in my third year I did apply for some PhDs straight after and when I say some PhDs I mean I think I literally applied to one or maybe two I really can't remember didn't get in and then I was like so disheartened because I was like oh, I didn't get in after applying to two places. I must be terrible. And I'm pulling this face because after I did my master's, some of the brightest people who I met applied to literally like 20 or 30 places before they finally got the PhD. So the fact that I'm pulling this face is at how naive I was at thinking, oh, I applied to two places and I didn't get it. Oh, bummer. Anyway, I'm digressing. At this point, I decided to take a year out and I thought in this year out, I'm going to work some casual jobs, save some money, go traveling with my then ex-boyfriend or my then boyfriend, now ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and then I thought I can apply for PhDs that way. And hopefully after this year, I would be accepted. And then I can start my PhD after that. Now, I can't actually remember if I applied to PhDs in this year because I was neck deep in the middle of a quarter life crisis and I was questioning what I wanted to do. See, because I had taken such a step back from academia, and my travel plans had fallen through. I was working between a tutoring job and retail and I was just in such a fuzzy state of mind. And I went through a lot of ups and downs during this period, but I think I got to a point where I just decided, you know, enough is enough. I can't be stuck in this state of indecision. 
question. I'm going to apply for a master's because if I don't get a PhD straight away, it might be better for me to go and do a master's, spend a year doing research, getting experience, being exposed to the field again, making contacts, and hopefully after that, I'll be able to apply with a PhD with more experience. So that was my plan. And then I started my master's and that pretty much changed everything. You see, when I was doing research before and the projects that the two projects that I had done before during my mo uh, my undergrad were also both cancer research. But when I started doing my masters, again, it was cancer research, but it wasn't basic science like what I had done in my undergrad. It was more translational. And basically, what I mean by basic and translational is that basic science tends to focus more on molecular science and I guess underlying pathways and mechanisms, whereas translation science is trying to translate the information that you already know into the clinic in order for it to have an effect on patients. And because of this, I was exposed to the medical setting. I was working with doctors, with nurses, I got to attend MDMs, I got to meet patients, and this just exposed me to the life of a academic doctor, if you like, um, or a research doctor, I should say. I met plenty of role models who were uh, physician doctors, but also had a foot in research and I thought that was amazing and I thought to be able to merge the two fields is a really incredible thing to do. And slowly everything snowballed and my decision got firmer and firmer until here we are today. And I get asked this even now, can you see yourself doing a PhD instead of or after medicine? And the answer to both is yes. Yes, I can. So before I got accepted onto medicine, when I submitted my 2018 application, you know, just in October, I said to myself that I'm going to give medicine maybe one more year of application. So if I'm not successful this year, I will give it one more go. And after that, I will actively start pursuing a PhD. So that answers the question of would I do a PhD instead of medicine? Although I'm so passionate about medicine and I'm so happy I've gotten accepted and I'm so excited to start, I am also very passionate about research, so although it wouldn't be exactly what I wanted to do, it would still give me a chance to do something that I love, so yes. Now regarding the second question of would I do a PhD after medicine, yeah, absolutely. Correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding it is that right now a lot of people who do want to become consultants need some sort of a master's or PhD or some sort of like a research background or experience. Maybe this isn't true in all fields, but I think definitely in oncology where it is very research heavy, it's a very research heavy specialty. So I can definitely see myself doing medicine, doing all of my core training and foundation years and starting specialising, starting to specialise in oncology and then perhaps take some time out to do a PhD then. Now the big disclaimer here is that I definitely do think it's naive to decide what specialty you want to do before you've got into medical school or before you've started medical school because for all I know I can start medical school and say actually I hate oncology, I would much rather become a GP or a surgeon or whatever other specialty I may feel better to suited to. But having said that, I do like to have a bit of a plan, so oncology is what I can see myself doing, even if it's not definitely what I'll end up doing. So I guess to sum this video up and give you a one to two sentence answer as to why I want to do medicine, because I genuinely think it would give me the opportunity to merge two things that I love which is science and research and the opportunity to be able to work with people and interact with patients and show empathy and listen and be able to communicate my scientific knowledge, which is something I'm so passionate about, to the patients in order to help them throughout their journey and help them with their treatment. And that for me is medicine summed up and also research summed up. And you know, I would be really interested to watch this video back maybe in a couple of years and see if I still feel the same. So let me know if you guys are in this situation. Do you come from a research background? And if so, can you relate to anything I'm saying? Or even if you are in a research background, could you see yourself doing medicine? Ultimately, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do give it a thumbs up and subscribe and all of that fun stuff. And until next time, take care and I will see you later.